Hi everyone and welcome back to Science Faction, the series where I get to indulge in some of my favourite works of science fiction and take a closer look at some of the technologies and inventions they have practically predicted. I'm an 80s child so naturally Back to the Future 2 has a warm fuzzy nostalgic place in my heart. It's 2015, the year of Back to the Future, so how on the mark was Robert Zemeckis? What did he get right and what do we still have to wait for? Last year we were all massively teased by the hoax Hover managed to play on the world, leading us to believe that hoverboards were finally here, but it is 2015, so will hoverboards finally land? The answer, I'm pleased to announce, is yes, although they are in prototype form and need a special metal surface to use them on, but still they're here so this is actually good news. Axpax, a California based company, have just launched a Kickstarter to raise $250,000 to make their Hendo hoverboard, having successfully made and tested a prototype. It's lifted using a magnetic field generated by four disc shaped hover engines and it levitates about an inch from the ground. It does require a special surface to work such as the metal floors that are needed to create the magnetic field. We may not have approved of all the fashion predictions made in the film, double ties anyone, but Marty McFly's self-tying Nike Air Mag trainers gave everybody shoe envy and I can happily announce that Nike's chief designer has promised that he'll deliver on time. Tinker Hatfield, such an appropriate name for a shoe designer, don't you think, told guests at the Agenda Trade Show in 2015 that he still had 11 and two thirds of a month left to deliver the dream shoes, which feature those all important power laces. I don't think this is all chat from Tinker either because Nike filed a patent for the mechanics and this shoe back in 2010. It's just taken them all this time to acknowledge they're actually going to make them. Replicas of the shoes were made in 2011 when Nike sold 1,500 pairs for charity. Although they had the glowing LED panel on the heel and the light up Nike logo that we see on the trainers in the film, they didn't have the mechanics and those all important power laces. Still though, if we have the patent for the mechanics and the styled shoe ready and raring to go, it's only a matter of time and yes, they will be on my Christmas list. Back to the Future definitely got the arrival of drones correct if CES 2015 was anything to go by. We haven't yet seen dog walking drones hit our shelves though, although last year a New Yorker, Jeff Myers, did exactly that. He posted a video to Vimeo which showed him hooking his lovely Labrador up to a drone. He programmed a route for the walk on his tablet and then monitored the dog using both a camera and GPS. The video split opinions. And to be completely honest, if you're that lazy, you'd be better off using a dog treadmill just like George Jetson with his dog Astra. But there's no doubt about it, drones are hot property. They're everywhere. You can't ignore them. Amazon retail giants want to use drones for delivery and have been testing their octocopters, claiming that if they get them up in the air, they'll be able to get deliveries to a customer's door within 30 minutes of them placing an order online, which is pretty impressive. It's going to be a few years until this happens as the aviation authorities haven't yet approved unmanned drones flying for civilian purposes so we'll have to watch this space. Let's wrap on the big question that you'll all be thinking. Flying cars, where are they and will they ever happen? Whilst time travel in a DeLorean is currently out of the question, whether flying cars will actually become mainstream is up for debate. However, they are here. The first of the front runners is the Terra Fugia Transition. It's classed as a light sports plane, but it's also a road legal vehicle. It's best to think of it less as a flying car and more of a roadable plane. The Terra Fugia is currently priced at $279,000 for those of you that are interested, but the delivery date is yet to be announced. Flying car number two hails from Slovakia. It's the Aeromobile 3.0 and it totally looks the part. It's like a really futuristic sports roadster. It's awesome. In the air it will go 125 miles per hour for around 430 miles and on the ground it will max speeds of 100 miles per hour going for 500 miles. So Aeromobile have said certification will vary by country making it quite complicated so it's those darn aviation authorities again. 
That's all for today's science faction. I've covered my favourites, but were there any gadgets and gizmos that you remember from the film Back to the Future 2, which exist now or that you wish existed? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.